Amici telespettatori, ben ritrovati, amici del cuore tassellato, vi spoglio immediatamente la puntata di stasera con l'ultimo round del campionato e main Monster Energy Supercross 2023 che si è svolta a Salt Lake City, per cui chiuderemo questo fantastico campionato sempre con il nostro carissimo amico Michele Fanton, per cui aspettate le immagini, le news e le due chiacchiere che abbiamo fatto. Motocross My Passion c'è! start off in the 250 and we had a great showdown brother versus brother 250 east west showdown we started off with the 250 east heat number one guys and you could tell everyone came out a little bit frisky wanted to take a win and hayden deegan this young man has got all kinds of talent in the heat race came out got the victory then we go over to the 250 west heat and again, different names than we're used to seeing. Levi Kitchen is starting to flex up a little bit. And guys, this was before the rain came in. And then it all came down to the 250 East-West Showdown. Light it up. After what we saw in the heat races, I thought that the showdown was going to be someone other than right. a, a past champion winning. However, man, these guys, you can never uh, you can never sleep on their skills. But uh, man, once, it, once the weather opened up and we got some rain, it, it changed the complexity of what would happen here. And really, the first half of the first lap changed the complexity big time for one rider, that being, of course, Hunter Lawrence, as RJ Hampshire took a lead, and it was it was all on. But Hunter, the damage was done, James. He was just mired in the back. Yeah, he got a bad jump off the gate, and pretty much his race was ended in the first 10 feet. And he's trying to make his way up through Jordan Smith and, and did a good job at coming up, trying to be safe. But yeah, this is what happened when you get a bad start. Um, you get caught up in these positions. but. You know, at the end of the day, his brother was up front, right? You know, racing last week's uh, winner with RJ, and then he gave him the business, as we'd like to say, RJ. How about this yeah, pass, that, that was retribution from East Rutherford a few weeks back, if you remember, when RJ absolutely sent it in there. I don't think he was anticipating the hydroplane like he did. However, uh, yeah, that was payback. So Jet Lawrence takes the East-West showdown, and his story career on the 250 comes to a conclusion. He now moves on to the big bikes, the 450. Classy move at the end as RJ Hampshire, Jet Lawrence say, no, no hard feelings, brother. Rick James. Levi Kitchen also joining them on the podium, but what a great performance. What a great show as the Trackworks crew put it all together. Jet Lawrence, RJ Hampshire, Levi Kitchen, Joe Shimoda, nice back bounce back for him at the second half of the season. And Jordan Smith, Hunter Lawrence finishing up in sixth place. Daniel Blair after the race speaking with the champion. Thank you, Jason. We do as well. Let's take a look at the 450 highlights, guys. This is an amazing night for Chase Sexton. Uh, James, we talked about it, something he will never forget. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a kid growing up riding motorcycles, this is what's one of your ultimate dreams to win as a Supercross champion and uh, championship. And Chase was able to get that done tonight. Um, and the way he did it, he goes out on top. Been able to do this, um, whole shot, lead every lap, Ricky. Yeah, this is a pretty much an easy race. <laughs> for Chase Sexton, and that's the way you want to go out uh, uh, on your last race, winning that championship like that winning. But man, Ken Roxon, just another 
Mm. Factory rider going down, he dabs his foot. James, walk us through what happened here. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, the track, it rained a little bit earlier, so the track was a little slippery. Um, Ken said he goes around the outside and, and loses the front end, and it does not take much. The, the, the front end washed out, hits his um, knee, and, and that was kind of into that. So Chase Sexton went out the way you want to, Ken, and um, for, unfortunately for him, this is definitely not the way he was, but he's had a great year. He finished it oh, yeah. strong, and um, he, can't, he can't be too bummed. Nice battle between the seven and the nine. Adam Cianciarillo and Aaron Plesser going at it. Yeah, a AP crashed in that camera earlier. We're going to send him a little <laughs> bill for that. And this right. camera right here, the AP camera. Um, but it's a good way to finish uh, for him. And then you're looking at Justin Hill go up inside of Adam Cincerelli, which woke him up, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, he did. And I, I tell you what, Justin Hill, each weekend, even before the guys started going down, man, he was getting better and better aboard that Team Tedder, Monster Energy, Mountain Motorsports, KTM. But in the end, it was the 23, Chase Sexton. A lot of people have talked about what he did this season, the ups, the downs, the, the leads that he threw away. But guys, he was there in the end, and that's what you have to do. You have to be there in that opportunity, that moment. I've quoted Ricky Carmichael throughout this week talking about it. He put himself in a position to make this happen, RC. Yeah, you got to be there. And this guy worked hard, very deserving of this championship. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing sweeter than doing something for the first time, especially when it comes to a 450. AMA Supercross champion. So the final results look like this. Chase Sexton, Aaron Plessinger, and Justin Hill. I'll tell you what, it was an impressive performance throughout the season. And tonight, despite a very slippery track, Chase Sexton came out, did exactly what he needed to do. And I think everyone here in Rice Cycle Stadium appreciated the workmanship of Chase Sexton. He is a worthy champion in 2023. The rest of the field coming through on a tough night. Rain came in through early, and then the crew did a great job of getting it set. But again, we tip our hat to Chase Sexton, who wins it all in 2023. Saluto immediatamente Michele Fanton, ciao Michele. Ciao Adriano. Siamo qua per commentare l'ultimo round delle main Monster Energy Supercross 2023, gara che si è svolta a Salt Lake City. Che cosa dire? Vorrei che tu riuscissi a portare avanti la puntata perché c'è tanto da raccontare, se parto io non mi fermo più. <ride> Ah, oddio, cosa da dire? Dire che comunque ormai il, la vittoria del campionato era già stata era già in, in tasca a Sexton, però giustamente diciamo che tutto il team Honda si è comportato molto diplomaticamente, ma anche professionalmente hanno festeggiato dopo l'arrivo della vittoria di Sexton in questa, in questa finale. E questo bisogna dare merito che c'è stata veramente grande fair play da parte di questo grande team perché quest'anno veramente l'onda ha sbaragliato in tutti i campi. Grande gara di Sexto anche perché ormai eh, era una passerella perché Roxen dopo il primo passaggio si è infortunato a un ginocchio per cui quello che poteva tra parentesi magari mettergli un po' le pulci eh, sul, sulle sulle orecchie comunque lui perché tutti gli altri abbiamo una lista di infortunati che è pazzesco quest'anno veramente eh, sì. Purtroppo è un anno veramente pesante per gli infortuni, c'è da lavorare tanto sulla sicurezza e, e vedere di cambiare tante cose, da, dalla cilindrata della moto eh, stanno già parlando, stanno lavorando tutti sui 350, anche se non sono convinto di abbassare la cilindrata perché sicuramente avranno già degli sviluppi eh, importanti a livello tecnologico, tecnico-meccanico 
che porteranno anche i 350 ad avere quelle potenze incredibili che hanno i 4 e mezzo nel giro di un anno o due per cui boh, eh, forse c'è da fare un pochettino più di eh, attenzione sul trattamento delle piste e, beh, queste cose chiaramente le diciamo da fuori al momento siamo seduti comodamente Vedremo se ci sarà una presa di coscienza anche perché i piloti in effetti sono un pochettino stufi di, di queste cose perché basta un piccolo errore che si frantumano e non è bello proprio anche perché sono fuori in tanti già operati già semi ripresi però è, è brutto commentare queste, queste fasi di un campionato cosa che poi commenteremo anche per il mondiale MXGP dalla prossima puntata per cui tre onda vincono i tre campionati 450 250 est e 250 ovest con i fratelli Lorenz che entrano nella storia di diritto Grandi gare grandi... e soprattutto grande affluenza di pubblico perché è dall'inizio dell'anno che vediamo gli stadi veramente pieni per cui tantissimi appassionati questo non fa altro che portare acqua al mulino del motocross che ne ha veramente bisogno sì, sì, beh, sicuramente poi in America diciamo che il, il, il supercross è, è da decenni e decenni che comunque ha un grande risalto da parte del pubblico a parte le ultime stagioni un po' col covid così ma però anche dieci anni fa che ogni tanto andavo in America a vedere queste gare, gli stadi erano sempre veramente stati. Eh, sì. C'è un seguito di pubblico pazzesco. Poi quest'anno il, il pieno ad ogni, ad, ogni, ad ogni gara fa capire che comunque ruota da parte del pubblico un grande interesse perché è, è, è spettacolare, emozionante e bellissimo. Per cui speriamo che nel futuro trovino, come hai detto tu, delle soluzioni per far sì che comunque i piloti che sono i primi attori a fare lo spettacolo vengano non... protetti che eh... vengano protetti purtroppo ci vorrebbe un pochettino più di decisione anche da parte dei team dei team manager e delle case appunto anche in America per avere più potere contrattuale parleremo anche della MXGP che avrebbe bisogno appunto nella prossima puntata di una svolta appunto da parte dei team e piloti per poter decidere insieme agli organizzatori che è una cosa importantissima penso che eh, sia bellissimo solamente che non si incastrano poi gli interessi economici no? poi alla fine eh, parliamo sempre della vil pecunia e, e andiamo avanti così per cui c'è Sexton eh, Conquista la tabella super rossa con numero 1, 372 punti, Eli Tomac. Parlare di Eli Tomac secondo a 339 dopo una stagione veramente fantastica è un pochettino triste, speriamo che si riprenda. Notizie lo daranno al via, non si sa come, quando e dove per cui ci sono notizie contrastanti e noi aspettiamo solamente le conferme quelle ufficiali però Tomac è sfortunatissimo anche lui un incidente stranissimo senza cadere tallone di Achille tendine ne avrà per ancora per un minimo minimo due barra tre mesi e sì, beh, Tomac diciamo che nel suo infortunio è veramente è stata una situazione veramente pazzesca perché lui stava affrontando con, con, grande, con grande tranquillità le difficoltà della pista e io credo che comunque non sia stato un errore ma il corpo evidentemente dopo ha ceduto è ha ceduto secondo me sì perché comunque a quei livelli là sei soggetto a grosse eh, grossi carichi di lavoro grandi allenamenti e prima o dopo il corpo non, non riesce più a reggere questa mole di lavoro che comunque Toma che sappiamo che lui fisicamente è veramente pazzesco perché io ho visto dei filmati, le tipologie di allenamento che fa sono, per un essere umano normale sono improponibili. Sì, poi quando inserisce il suo beast mode eh, praticamente duplica la velocità, un po' come succede nell'MX GP con Jeffrey Erlings, eh, ha fatto tutta la gara 
e anche le gare precedenti facendo degli over jump incredibili sostenuto da, da una meccanica e degli assetti molto molto particolari l'hanno sempre salvato questa volta eh, un, piccolo, un piccolo disagio si è trasformato veramente in un grossissimo problema per, vo- per lui volevo no. menzionare in effetti il fair play che menzionavi da parte di Honda perché Sexton è stato eh, veramente carino durante l'intervista f- ha fatto fatica a godere di quel momento perché dice preferivo vincere direttamente con l'avversario con cui ho lottato tutto l'anno eh, ma l'ha, l'ha detto di cuore per cui questo supporta il fatto che eh, il Supercross e alcuni piloti sono veramente veramente corretti e, e insomma dispiace anche loro perché poi o uno o l'altro abbiamo visto Barsha, Anderson anche loro infortunati, Cooper Webb eh, e così, c'è molta vicinanza tra loro. Quella, questa vicinanza dovrebbe essere però gestita in un gruppo e portata poi agli organizzatori. C'è molto fermento in America, eh, devo dire. Ah, io credo che sia comunque necessario e eh, indispensabile avere, avere comunque un riferimento da parte dei pilotti dove possono comunque esprimere quello che sono anche i loro problemi e eh, i loro giudizi anche su quello che sono gli aspetti tecnici dove loro eh, sono i primatori ad affrontare le difficoltà della pista, dove rischiano la pelle, eh, sì. di culo ad ogni salto, per cui devono avere voce in capitolo, perché comunque eh, le dinamiche e le situazioni che si vedono ad ogni, ad ogni gara e ad ogni stagione devono comunque porre rimedio, perché non si può andare avanti in questa maniera, finire le stagioni con dieci piloti eh, ufficiali eh, sì. con a casa. È non, è, non è assolutamente bello. Hanno criticato molto il Dragon Back, eh, dove si è fatto male anche Justin Barsha e così, e hanno detto che era una cosa inutile, si poteva evitare, e lì ci sono stati... Vari incidenti anche perché poi parliamo sempre dei top driver che hanno appunto gli infortuni, ma ci sono anche tanti privati che si sono fatti male. Adesso non vorrei metterla come un bollettino di guerra che non mi piace, non mi piace commentare gli incidenti, però in effetti è così. No, vabbè, ma giustamente quello che stai dicendo è che quando si fanno male i piloti di basso rango dove non vengono quasi mai menzionati perché fanno parte della bassa classifica eh sì. la gente se ne accorge anche molto relativamente ma quando vediamo un pool di piloti di alto eh livello sì. per cui consenziosi, allenati con delle squadre e con delle moto veramente performanti eh, eh sì. a farsi male così vuol dire che c'è qualcosa che non sta andando bene sì, diciamo che l'unico intoppo, incidente brutto è quello che ha subito Cooper Webb che non c'entra niente alla pista, purtroppo un piccolo errore, pilota dietro, San Sarullo non, ha, non è riuscito a evitarlo. Però notizia di oggi, la confermo perché è ufficiale, Cooper Webb partirà per il National appunto fra due settimane, per cui è completamente ripreso e questo ci solleva l'animo di vedere un pilota che torna dietro al cancelletto. Per cui facevo un piccolo riepilogo di quello che è stato il campionato Cesare Sexton, eh, ripeto, 372 punti, Lai Tomac 339, cu- anche Cooper Webb, pur infortunato e saltando appunto l'ultima gara, 304 punti, Ken Roxen a pari punti con eh, Cooper Webb, ma Cooper Webb aveva avuto eh, una prestazione migliore nell'ultimo. Justin Barsha a quinto, Jason Anderson che io personalmente a inizio anno lo davo tra i primi tre sicuramente, invece ha faticato tantissimo, è caduto spesso, ha commesso errori e purtroppo si è anche fatto male. Plessinger, eh, Plessinger eh, anche lui lo vedevo un pochettino più avanti perché è sempre stato velocissimo in prova, ha avuto tantissimi giri migliori, eh, però insomma finisce settimo quello che mi ha impressionato è Justin Hill che comunque è ottavo in campionato San Sarulo, Wilson, Melkerrat, Christian Craig anche lui purtroppo fuori praticamente da molte gare 
Eh, Josh Hill, Colton Nichols, Colton Nichols è che ha confermato la sua partecipazione al campionato mondiale Supercross con la prima gara a Birmingham con un team Honda, che non è quello Nils di Giacomo Gariboldi. Comunque, e qua finisce la 4.50. A parlare della 2.50, di che cosa vogliamo parlare? Dei fratelli Lorenz, per cui Vabbè, parti. Non c'è <ride> assolutamente altra cosa da dover parlare. Eh, la dimostrazione con i fatti e i risultati, quello che veramente hanno saputo fare in tutta la stagione, a dimostrazione della loro supremazia, ah, eh, sì. supportati sicuramente da un, da un grande mezzo, perché comunque l'onda in America su due mezzo lavora tantissimo eh, e sì. i risultati le danno pienamente ragione. Hanno due piloti eh. grandissimi, però le moto sono veramente performanti. Per cui un Jeff Lawrence che ha voluto onorare la sua, la sua vittoria di Il campionato. suo campionato. Questa grande vittoria e purtroppo il, il fratello è incappato in una brutta partenza e con la scivolatina è finito set, sesto, però comunque nulla toglie che anche il potenziale di questa ragazza è molto alto. Eh sì, perché Hunter Lawrence comunque vince con 241 punti su Aiden Digan, rookie dell'anno, sì. eh, 17, quasi 18 anni. Eh, le aspettative su questo ragazzo qua le avevamo già prima anche nelle classifiche diciamo delle gare non dei professionisti ha vinto praticamente tutto quello che c'era da vincere e in sella una moto super competitiva che è quella della Star Racing eh, Yama eh, ne vedremo delle belle quest'altro anno con Digan. tu cosa dici? Ah, eh, ne vedremo delle belle <ride> ne ha già fatto vedere <ride> delle belle. Per cui, tanto di cappello di questo ragazzino la sua prima esperienza da rookie in questo campionato è veramente agguerritissimo perché ci sono fiori di piloti importanti lui si è distinto ma soprattutto oltre a, a aver fatto dei buoni risultati e, e, e dimostra la classifica che ha fatto secondo è stato costante non si è sì, fatto sì. male perché di solito il ragazzino giovane arrembante pur di fare il risultato va a fare qualche rischio che comunque la sua guida eh, è... I rischi, i rischi li ha presi, li ha assorbiti anche perché ha fatto delle, dei, delle belle cadute anche eh, lui. Sì, Però è tutta arte che ha messo da parte come si di, dicevano sì. le nostre nonne, no? Quello che però, tra parentesi, scusa se mi permetto, eh, mi dispiace tantissimo, è Max Asti che secondo me eh, avrebbe yeah. meritato il secondo posto. Adesso senza togliere nulla a Diga che è stato bravissimo, però, ma per un punto eh, eh, sì. Asti eh, è arrivato a podio, un terzo posto meritatissimo, eh, sì. e tanto bravissimo, però un secondo secondo me ci sta bene. Molta delusione da parte di Jordan Smith che è stato velocissimo per tutto l'anno, ha combattuto con i denti, anche lui ha commesso qualche errore, finisce quarto in campionato a 159 punti. Chris Blows quinto, Jeremy Martin sesto, nei Trasher settimo e poi troviamo un europeo che è Tom Bial che anche lui sfortunato paio di infortuni che l'hanno, l'hanno un po' scosso e è rimasto fu- fuori eh, però insomma eh, il primo anno va bene così sicuramente lo vedremo super competitivo l'anno prossimo e lo vedremo al via del National che sicuramente farà benissimo sì, beh, cosa sì. pensi? no no assolutamente insomma. Tom Vialle all'inizio del, del campionato ci aveva sorpreso con delle bellissime partenze Mm-mm e nei primi giri eh, riusciva addirittura a tenere il ritmo dei primi poi naturalmente l'esperienza che deve maturare in questo campionato è tantissima comunque ha dimostrato che ha le capacità tecniche per poter eh, comunque primeggiare e sicuramente, sicuramente la, la, la prossima stagione eh, migliorerà e sarà uno dei pretendenti al podio quello sicuro eh, però, sì. eh, come hai detto tu, andrà, partirà per il National e io credo che Tom Vial partirà appunto per, per vincere il campionato. Assolutamente no. sì, spinto da, chiaramente da una casa come KTM che gli darà una moto super competitiva come al solito e messa a punto proprio per lui. È un bravissimo ragazzo, non si lamenta mai, mi piace, bel pilota proprio, chiaramente... Sì. Che, due volte campione del mondo per cui 
è così. Eh, volevo parlare di Joshi Moda che anche lui ha fatto un... Allora, è rientrato da un infortunio che l'ha tenuto a lungo fuori, fuori dalle gare. È rientrato e ha dimostrato subito grande velocità. Chiaramente ormai il campionato era, era verso, verso la onda di, di Hunter Lawrence. Stavo guardando le statistiche di Hunter Lawrence durante, durante il, il campionato. Ha fatto tre all shot ha fatto 89 giri in testa, per cui ha fatto 7 vittorie, ha ottenuto 7 vittorie per cui il campionato è meritatissimo. Ecco. Oh, cioè, un campionato che è stato emozionante eh, per tutti, per i piloti, meno quelli infortunati che sicuramente avranno qualche rammarico, per il pubblico che ha seguito questo campionato a livello internazionale in modo massivo, perché i dati anche dello streaming TV, anche Motocross My Passion, sono anni che sta spingendo, sta spingendo Supercross a tutti i livelli. Per cui una piccola parte, lo 0,001% me la prendo volentieri. Assolutamente te la vedo, perché insomma se uno che ci crede c'è sempre eh, che sì. sta lavorando per mantenere i risultati. E quest'anno vedo che okay, come, come, come apprezzamento, ma anche come, come seguito, è stato veramente molto buono. Eh sì. Adesso, sicuramente da, dalla settimana prossima, parleremo chiaramente, giustamente, con tanta voglia, di quello che sta succedendo appunto in MX GP, in MX2. Vorrei partire subito a parlarne, ma purtroppo il tempo è tiranno, dicono, e devo rimanere nei tempi televisivi per, eh, per poter mandare in onda la puntata. Vuoi aggiungere qualcosa? C'è qualche novità all'ovolo? Parliamo un po' anche un ma minuto, adesso, un minuto ma... e mezzo delle nostre di cose. Ma le nostre di cose, adesso l'ovolo diciamo che è momentaneamente diciamo, in stand by perché diciamo che le gare importanti che dovevamo fare in questa stagione sono state, sono state fatte, abbiamo avuto un buonissimo successo, la federazione ci ha anche elogiato per il nostro lavoro, eh, probabilmente per fine stagione avremo, faremo anche delle altre modifiche all'interno del circuito per migliorarlo e, eh, e perché comunque il nostro obiettivo è riuscire a portare a riportare a, a, a riportare una gara di mondiale Ma, eh, adesso non, è, non andiamo però i sogni vanno fatti grandi Michele eh, sogni hai ragione. facciamoli eh, grossi, però, facciamoli eh, grossi. Eh, guardando eh. la realtà noi vorremmo intanto portare a casa una bella gara del prestigio che per eh. noi sarebbe, sarebbe veramente una gara tu come lo, vedi il, come lo vedi il prestige a livello di pubblico? Perché io vedo sempre poca gente. Ma, eh, noi nel Veneto, eh, purtroppo, lo dico francamente, ma anche con un gusto di rammarico, è da tantissimi anni che non vengono fatte gare di un certo livello. Perché l'ultima gara importante che è stata fatta nel nostro territorio è stata Giallo del Montello, che ha il mondo nel 1996. Grande Vabbè. pista, Giavera è nel mio cuore, <ride> come l'ovolo, eh? eh, con, sì, Ach no, no, con no, Akira no. Watanabe, Dio, Dio, Dio. mamma mia. Per cui eh, manca da quasi 30 anni una gara, una gara importante, anche una gara internazionale, per cui il nostro territorio ha bisogno, perché secondo me abbiamo un bacino di, eh, di utenza, ma anche e soprattutto ma di ricettività di anche del territorio. Assolutamente. Cioè sono posti bellissimi con uh, alberghi, cioè sono, è strutturata bene la zona. Per cui dita incrociate Michele, sono sicuro che prima o poi riuscire, riuscirai e riuscirete a riportare dove era l'ovolo una volta e magari con qualche passo in avanti. Per cui grande lavoro da parte tua e dei tuoi collaboratori e di tutto lo staff appunto del, di Lovolo. Ricordiamo che è possibile venire anche a girare amatorialmente, dammi eh, gli orari e, 
e i giorni di apertura. No, la pista naturalmente a giovedì pomeriggio da mezzogiorno fino, fino alla sera è aperto a tutti e il sabato pomeriggio e la domenica tutto il giorno, dove c'è anche un'abbondante natura per evitare appunto polvere. Allora, sull'abbondante infiamma eh, si sì, infiammatura <ride> in affiatura in c'è anche l'infiammatura ma è un altro è un altro un'altra cosa ha piovuto a raffica negli ultimi dieci giorni siamo rimasti chiusi praticamente in casa senza andare a girare eh, che... eh, si sta aprendo adesso oggi oggi c'erano 31 gradi per cui eh, le piste adesso saranno calienti ah, con questo io vi saluto caramente amici telespettatori vi auguro un buon proseguimento seguite Motocross My Passion Michele Fanton se vuoi salutare gli amici a casa assolutamente intanto un grosso saluto a te ma a tutti gli appassionati che ci seguono costantemente sempre più numerosi questo mi fa e piacere poi la nostra, il nostro slogan viva sempre il Motocross quello sempre per cui ci saranno immagini altre interviste altre cose belle appunto all'interno della puntata per cui seguiteci e noi vi diamo appuntamento la settimana prossima sempre qua su Motocross My Passion e sui nostri canali social uh, youtube motocross my passion tv dove vengono messe in onda le puntate andate in onda televisivamente per cui le potete godere come quando volete la nostra pagina web che è www.motocrossmypassion.it per cui avanti tutta Stasera non faccio la chiusa da solo, ma la faccio con te, per cui salutiamo tutti e diamo l'appuntamento alla settimana prossima. Ciao ragazzi, ciao Adriano. Jordan Smith, while well, starts have not been good throughout the season, he's been having just eight at the whole shot line in the mains. In the heat there earlier on today, we saw him out up front and made all the difference. It led to that heat race win, so can he get that start again here in the main? And it's time for Hunter Lawrence to win a Supercross championship. We look back to the beginning stages of his career here. What an incredible journey. You got to think about the hours spent on the spin bike, the hours at the track, the injuries, the rehab, suffering through a diet, having to eat exactly what it takes to be perfect every single time you're on the bike. You go through all that because you want to be a Supercross champion. And this year, he has been fantastic from the very first gate drop of the year until this moment. And it's right here, a chance to be a champion, Hunter Lawrence. The scenario is this, Hunter Lawrence needs to finish 20th or better and the title is his. It's important right here, right handed first corner, get a good start. It is game on in Nashville, 250 East on the line. And he does exactly what he needs to do. What a recovery by Hunter. He almost ran into the gate, but he recovered. Like we got, ooh! Gets a little bit of business from Jordan Smith, the winner of his heat race, and Smith says it is on. Yeah, but you gotta remember Jordan Smith being Hayden Deegan's teammate, still the mathematically, Hayden Deegan has a chance at this championship. It's a long shot. I think mean, it isn't gonna happen, but still, he was going for it. Yeah, yeah and I think all that's spun off of like how good Jordan rode in that heat race so he can keep it up on two wheels knowing that Hunter's maybe a little bit in defense mode meaning he's not going to take too many chances maybe it's an opportunity for these guys to get it watch the number 96 on that red Honda of Hunter Lawrence he's going to stop Jordan Smith he's going to sit follow 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 and I think he's going to wait for the pass to open up boom and make it
Yeah, 15 minutes plus one lap, James. Now, the one thing that's with Hunter, he's got to worry. Jordan's had a few bobbles this year. He had some crashes and stuff. So there's some guys that you don't mind following. Like, I didn't mind following you because I knew you were going to stay up. Some other guys I won't want to follow because, you know, things might happen. So I expect if Hunter can get around them, he's probably going to try to do that. Ricky, how do you turn off the competitive juices knowing that you don't need to win this race to get yeah. the title? But you know, Hunter, he's going to want to race this thing hard. I kind of like what Steve Latart was talking about off air. It's like, man, you go into this race and, and approach it the same way you yep. always have. Listen, Hunter is a very intelligent racer. He's not going to take any unnecessary risks. However, he's going to race hard. He's going to race hard, and there is nothing better than winning a championship and winning the race. Yeah, and I feel like with Jordan being in front of him making a pass, Ricky, it might actually help Hunter because now he's got to be concentrated on the race compared to if he was out front by himself or by himself in general, he'd be focused like, okay, not making a mistake. Right now, he's got a battle. So, and if he doesn't watch out, you got Joe Shimoda just made a pass on Jeremy Martin. He's coming up and he's another guy that would like to win one of these races as well. You know, Hunter Lawrence, too, we talk about the pressure of the title and what that's like. And sometimes I feel, James, I don't know how it was for you, but there was something subconsciously that would take over to where I couldn't ride as fast as I normally could. And I'm like, man, I feel like I'm, I'm doing everything that I can, but I just it wasn't showing on the laps. Did you ever experience that? Oh, yeah, I, I experienced that a lot. I literally was on the last time I won the championship. No, not I couldn't feel my legs on the gate. So I, I don't know what it was, but JS had no legs sitting on the gate. So <laughs> Hunter, I feel you, brother. <laughs> 250 East main event. This is the situation. Jordan Smith leads the race, but it is Hunter Lawrence who sits in second place, the overall points leader. He can clinch the 250 East title with a top 20 finish. Jordan Smith hasn't won since Daytona, guys, in 2018. So that's five years ago. I think these next two laps for Hunter is going to tell you all, all about what his plans for the race. And Joe made a little mistake coming up through that dragon back and lost some time, but Joe Shimoda looked like the fastest guy on the racetrack. Well, I saw Hunter Lawrence make a mistake in the whoops. He missed one with his front wheel. We talk about what could go wrong if that happens. It seemed like he took a step back. He lost some time to Jordan Smith, but a lot of racing left here on a very difficult track here today. Yep. The one interesting thing with um, Hunter that puts him in a tougher position is, as you mentioned earlier, Jordan Smith is Hayden Deegan's teammate, and although it didn't, it didn't look like they got along that well in the heat race, you got to think at some part Hunter's thinking that, well, he is on a blue bike. Would he do anything? I don't think Jordan would do that, but Hunter doesn't know that. His issue is going to be that number 30 Kawasaki, that green Kawasaki coming up behind him. It's going to make that, make that change for him. Coming up on ten and a half minutes to go here. It'll be ten and a half minutes to go plus one lap in the 250s main event. It is still Jordan Smith out front and Hunter Lawrence just stalking and possibly waiting for him to make a mistake and not forcing the issue, Will. And like you said, Tony, it's been a long time since Jordan Smith has that win there. Five years. This would mean a lot to him. Talking to him earlier, his eyes forward as far as his career goes here. He loves being with the Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha team. He feels comfortable on the bike, but he's very aware that consistency is an issue. So this win would be fantastic for him. But guys, I think the way that he would win this, stay on his bike, he gets all this pressure, would also mean a lot to him that he's moving in the right direction. James, to what you were talking about a bit earlier, I feel these next couple laps, if Hunter is able to keep the pressure on Jordan Smith, I think the dynamic is going to change and he's going to have a legit shot of winning this race. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks good. And one thing with this track, with it being dry, there's not a lot of chances like overriding the thing as far as like just splat out like speed. Right now, like I think Hunter being the rider that he is, he's very technical and smooth. So I think these conditions kind of suit him. So even though he's got a championship, he's probably pretty comfortable with the track conditions. The only thing that's maybe going to get a little uncomfortable if number 30 comes up and starts racing him. Guys, communication is key. And right now, Hunter Lawrence is counting. And wow, well, that changes everything. We'll have to keep an eye on the pit board. What I was about to say, the communication between the rider and the mechanic is so pivotal, pivotal, especially in a moment like this where Hunter needs to be aware of everything. So watch, he's going to go through the whoops, come around the corner, and right here, here's the shot. Call number 30. That's letting him know it's Joe Shimoda behind him, and you can be calm. So right now, Hunter will process everything he just learned in the last 30 seconds, evaluate it, and
and go from there. Okay. Okay, folks. Now, we're looking at the battle with Hayden Deegan. And Hayden's actually riding really well. Let's see if he's trying to get in on Jeremy Martin. Jeremy probably like, what's up, dude? Yeah. But so what we were saying with Hunter, like he had a rapid to chase. Let's see what he does the next couple of laps on there. Does he start making mistakes, Ricky? And does that championship creep in? Because now he's up front. And as I said earlier, it's different when you're out front by yourself having Joe Shimoda come up there. Let's see if he starts making mistakes. And if he can keep that gap on there, then I think he'll be in a good position. Yeah, I but. think if he's able to gap him, he's good. However, if Joe Shimoda, number 30 on that Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki, catches him, I think he'll give way. I really do think that he'll lay up, let Joe go by. Because if you go back last year to the Pro Motocross Championship, that last round, Joe gave him the business. And it was a tough tough collision yeah that, that they said they my friends i don't know if they were <laughs> friends after that so yeah going to your point he did blow some doors off so uh you know but i don't think joe is that type of route at least not for this one we have reached the halfway point of the 250 east main event monster energy available now at kroger as this track starts to wear i think it plays right into hunter lawrence's playbook because of the throttle control, because of the precision he has on the motorcycle. I mean, this track is absolutely getting so dry here today. You can see it's almost like blue boob out there because it's drying up so much. Yeah, and I think watching everywhere except for these whoop sections, I believe actually Joe Shimoda is faster than Hunter Lawrence, but when he gets it in the laps, he can't catch him. There and we go. Position. But now we're watching Danger Boy, and I'm sure he's probably getting a little frustrated. Hayden Deegan on the outside, Martin on the inside, gets by him. Hey, put him this I love that. You hear that crowd? Put him on the school bus, send him to school. No contest whatsoever. He squares Jeremy Martin up on that corner, right in the right-hand side of the whoops. Carries the speed, makes the pass, Will. And Hayden Deegan, we spoke about that second place in points at the top of the show there. He's just added another two on Max Anstey. Talking to Hayden earlier on today, I said, you know, how important is it here then to be second in points? He's like, obviously, I'm really happy about it. If he told me that at the beginning of my rookie year, I would have been excited. He said, but I'm not going to lie. Now I want more. He said, my goalposts have completely shifted since the beginning of the season. He said, if I had been more aggressive, I wish I had been more aggressive at the start of the season, maybe Daniel I could have narrowed up that gap to Hunter. So Hayden Tegan, we know where his eyes are sitting. Exactly. Now I'm looking at the leaderboard. Hunter Lawrence now up three seconds. On that last lap, he was clear of all lap traffic. I saw a little extra intensity and aggression, and I think he used that as a chance to get away. He did it there. And guys, just think about this. In six minutes, Hunter Lawrence can be a Supercross champion. I think back to 2021, Cooper Webb goes to the final round of the series in Salt Lake City. He didn't have to win. He just had to cruise around and get it done. But he went out and won the race to make a statement and say, hey, this is my championship. I'm even winning when I don't have to. And Hunter Lawrence is doing that right now. So Hunter Lawrence taking care of business right now. He is the overall leader in the 250 East class by 49 points. Then it gets interesting because Hayden Deegan is charging hard, guys. He has got a one-point lead on Max Anstey for second place. Yeah, Hunter is, is riding great right now. I can see the intensity level actually starting to pick up. But not necessarily he's going faster, but I just see more authority. No no more tendency to like being tender around the racetrack. And all that stuff has made him pull away from Joe. And as I said earlier, it looked like Joe was the faster rider. But since the track is slippery, there's only a certain amount of speed you can carry around this racetrack. And every time Joe went over that, he made a mistake, gave Hunter the gap, gave Hunter the confidence. Now Hunter's got a three, three and a half second lead. So five minutes away from a championship for Australia's Hunter Lawrence, number 96 on board the Honda HRC. His younger brother, Jet Lawrence, races on the 250 West class, and he'll be racing for the title next week in Denver. This type of this type of track too, James, with these conditions here today, I feel like it takes more effort. This track isn't forgiving like we've been talking about all day long. So you're right, you may ride a little more tense. You're fighting and looking for where that traction might be, which takes more physical effort to do. And Hunter Lawrence is also in great shape. So not only does his style play into the cards of how this conditions is, but his fitness does as well. Yeah, you see him making a few little mistakes. And as a rider out there, when you say guys are locked in, you notice when Hunter went around that corner before the finish line, uh, he was just focused on what he was doing. Almost ran into the, the, the guy that Braswell. was down at Braswell. And you would just think, like, folks at home, they're like, wouldn't he be able to see that? 
But no, these guys are just so locked in and focused on what they're doing, and especially with Hunter right now, he's just trying to get through these things, and things are happening. He had a moment on the Dragon's Back, Ricky, where he clipped the uh, uh, tough block trying to find that traction you just mentioned. These guys ride the edges of the tracks. The reasons that they do that is because sometimes that's where the smoothest line is, or that's where all the grip and the traction is fighting constant. These racers are constantly searching for smooth yeah. lines and the most efficient lines. Three and a half minutes to go. He's told to be smart. Just has to finish top 20, and the title is his. So Hunter Lawrence will on his way. Nice battle shaping up, though, for second place. There's Joe Shimoda. Here comes Smith, and Deegan's lurking in fourth. Yeah, Hey Deegan was the fastest guy on the track by over a second in the last lap, so um, he's coming for sure. This would be a great run if Joe Shimoda is able to get on that podium. You see him right there, number 30. Pro Circuit Monster Energy Kawasaki coming in basically towards the end of the season. Be a nice confidence booster as they gear up here soon for the Pro Motocross Championship. Now, even for Jordan Smith, he made that mistake out front. I would say his day, if he can keep it together, it's been a positive day. Um, you know, winning that heat race, the band will make a mistake from leading the race. And if he can get around Joe or stay up on a podium, it'd be a good day for him. Yeah, certainly a good day. It's great to see. Jordan rebound from that mistake when he lost the lead. Keep his mind in it. Keep putting in good laps and never give up. Joe Shimoda, this will be his first podium of the season, as you guys alluded to, coming in late because of injury. Finished fourth in Atlanta, ninth in New Jersey. And for Shimoda, this would be a nice way, as Ricky pointed out, to catapult him into the outdoor season. Remember, it's all about the Super Motocross World Championships. You want to qualify, you want to punch your ticket, and then you got the big playoffs RC coming up in September. Charlotte, Chicago, and then the showdown in LA. I can't, I cannot wait. The inaugural season, finally some playoffs. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be good. So uh, a couple of laps ago, Hayden Deegan ran a 54, which is one of the fastest uh, lap times of the, of the race. This lap, he ran a 56, uh, six, which is two seconds slower. And as I said earlier, there's only a certain amount of speed you can carry around this track. And Hayden was trying to make up that gap on those guys. I think he kind of found that. So him losing that time is, is difficult, but it's still run good. If you are... Hunter Lawrence right now, number 96 on that Honda. This is where the thinking starts coming into mind, I would think. All of the years, all of the struggles, all of the work you do in the off season, finally coming, everything has come to fruition. He's put everything together, all the pieces of the puzzle. There's his brother Jet in the box. I think what's so impressive, guys, is Jet is his younger brother. Jet came in with so much publicity, so much hype, and, Ju and Hunter was having a rough first year, and then he just said, you know what? I'm gonna turn it around, and here it is. He's gonna get the title right or down in the background. Folks, that's wow. why we say you gotta stay focused on there. I mean, Hunter, that could have been gnarly yeah. with that lapper that it just went down. Then the guy crashes, then he gets the, the huck -a buck at the end of the thing. <laughs> it, anything can happen, so. I, again, earlier, I think the track being as difficult as it is, is helping him because he knows he has to stay that way, Ricky. Yep, he has to say, picture perfect. His lead Two is 4.3 yeah. seconds, just needs to be in the top 20. Hunter Lawrence will claim his first professional title here as a 250 East Supercross champion. Man, what a special moment. This could be in another lap and a quarter. Yep. The, you, you think about the family story. They sold everything they yeah. had in Australia. They moved to Europe, raced the GPs in the European scene, stayed there for several years, got their chance in the U.S. Yeah. One thing that's about racing and bring it home as his mechanic, that's awesome, is that even though he's out there riding by himself, he's racing for a lot of people. Like his mechanic, his bus driver, his team manager, his family. His, his family like we all, I mean, you see his brother, right, brother, his brother's right there. So it's not only his emotion and how happy, it's the emotion of like celebrating with your family. And that's something that I know with this sport, being an individual sport, the family and the team that you got around, like it is a special feeling. And Hunter, he's about to get it and feel it again. Looks like he still can feel his legs. So he made it far tonight. Here he comes, Hunter Lawrence. The fans are on their feet. 
It's 7 a.m. on Sunday back in Australia, and I hope they're up and watching because Hunter Lawrence is bringing home a title. Plus out to Vegemite, the 23-year-old Australian. One more turn. Let's hear it. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Hunter Lawrence is the 250 East champion. Congratulations. That's so awesome. I look at look at that emotion. Gosh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Everybody's getting hugs. Everybody's gonna get a hug. Cool to see Joe come up to him. Jordan, that's respect right there. Everybody's that sportsmanship. Yeah. They know how, how much work that yes. kid put in. They know how hard it is. They know where he's come from. Risked it all, his family, and the payout came. And how can you not watch next week in Denver as his younger brother, Jet, tries to clinch a 250 West title. So a spoil of riches for the Lawrence family. But to Ricky Carmichael's point, they have been all in full commitment on their sons and their racing careers. And this is the payoff right now. The win. I hope all my Australians y'all up seeing this. This is awesome. Yes, dude. Hunter Lawrence, the 250 East champion. We will speak to him when we return to Nashville. Monster Energy AMA Supercross is brought to you by Monster Energy, proud partner of Monster Energy Supercross. What a day in Nashville. Seventh win of the season, 12th win of his career, and first career titles. We set it down to Daniel Blair with a 250 East champion. I'm with the champ, and I'm with Mike Pelletier of the American Motorcycle Association to present Hunter Lawrence with his number one plate. Thanks, Daniel. Hunter, congratulations on a great season. On behalf of the AMA, it gives me great pleasure to present you with the 2023 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship 250 East number one plate. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Hunter, congratulations. When you came off the track, everybody rushed to you. They all wanted to talk to you, but now it's your turn to talk to thank the fans, the friends, the family that you've made here in the U.S., in Europe, back home in Australia. Hunter Lawrence, you're a champion, and it's your turn to talk. Uh, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Everyone that is with me now was with me when I was at my lowest to lows, so this is incredible. I can't say I ever dreamed of this as a kid because I didn't know this was possible, so uh, I'm choked up. This is just surreal. This weekend's been incredible. Perfect day. Uh, I just want to celebrate this with everyone I love and care, my whole team, everyone. This is means the world. And you win the title and you also win the race. Take me through that main event. Was there a plan in place or was it just see what happens because it ultimately worked out perfectly? Yeah, uh, I wanted to win this weekend so bad with everything that was going on. And Jordan got me in the start and I was just sitting behind him and then made a mistake and I got him and then just navigate the lappers. But uh, just kept focus until uh, last time through the whoops and then I kind of let it out. I couldn't mess it up too bad from there to the finish line. So a little uh, early celebration. Congratulations, Hunter Lawrence. You're a Supercross champion. Australian Hunter Lawrence with the exclamation point is the 250 East champion in 2023. Final results look like this. It's Hunter Lawrence, Joe Shimoda finishing second, Jordan Smith who got the whole shot in third on the podium. Hayden Teagan was coming hard. You come in in their second, 17 years of age, finishes in fourth. Max Anstey rounding out the top five. What a showdown, but in the end, it was Hunter Lawrence. He set it back down the track and Will Christian. Thank you, Todd. And with Joe Shimoda now, a great second. Congratulations to you, Joe. You're, this is only your third Supercross race back there, having had to sit out the beginning of the season. Are you surprised how quickly you got back into the groove? And what does this tell you about what's coming in the future? 
Um, just want to tell you, uh, thanks so much to my uh, family team and everyone who believed in me. Uh, last couple of months, a lot of cut sitting, um, and it's not fun. So just to be out here is awesome to me, and uh, thank you guys so much, and we just keep pushing, and um, let's do this thing. Well deserved. Thank you so much, Joe. Congratulations. There's his dad, Darren Hunter Lawrence, and uh, the family is here for the weekend. Word on the street is there'll be a little bit of a party tonight, so I feel bad for the folks that are sharing a hotel room or floor with the Lawrence family RC because it is going to be on Johnny O'Mara, Supercross legend. His riding coach is also there as well. So we're just getting started with this Australian Honda HRC party. There are the points, 250 East to end with Hunter Lawrence, 224, 56 points clear of Hayden Deegan with seven wins. Max Anstey on the podium, edging out Jordan Smith and Chris Blows, the top five as we send it back down onto the track. Celebration continues here in Nashville. Here's Daniel.